Hi, and welcome back to Joomla Development 101. In this lecture, we will be discussing the helper file of our plugin creation series. So, a couple of things to remember about the Joomla plugin helper before we start looking at the code. First of all, it's important to know that this helper file is optional. I've chosen to use a helper file in my plugin to make the code easier to read and also to demonstrate how one would use a helper file, but you do not have to use one in your plugin. Secondly, the helper file does not need to extend JPlugin. Now, we chose not to extend JPlugin with our helper file because we did not want to use the same constructor. So, you do not need to extend anything with your helper file class. And lastly, the reason why we are using a helper file is because I feel it keeps our core files simple and easier to read. In our case, our core file will now simply show the constructor and the trigger which is going to be called by Joomla. So let's begin by looking at the code. We are going to open the helper.php file. Here we're going to need to begin creating the helper file. So once again, as I did before, I'm going to create my header. It's going to be roughly the same as it was before. And again, just as we did with the main file, I'm going to make sure that I define jexec. By doing so, I ensure that this file will not be hacked or reached directly by any third party source. Next, we'll need to create the class. You can name your helper class anything that you want. For ease of use and to help me remember what it is, I'm naming it Link Protect Helper. And if I look back at what we learned in the last lecture, I actually have already referred to my helper file, Link Protect Helper. So if you've been following along in this series and you've already created a file helper name, Make sure you name the file the same. Now, there's a couple things we're going to want to do first. Because in our original file, we are instantiating link protect helper and passing it some params, we will need to create a constructor function. Now, because this is not extending JPlugin, it is not necessary to use the same parameters on this construct function that we would on the main file. Here, I'm simply going to set a class level params object equal to the passed in params value. By doing so, I now have access to all of my plugin params from my helper file. Now, let's look back to refresh our memory regarding what we need our helper file to do. In our onContentBeforeDisplay function, we look for two possibilities. Either the user is leaving the site, or we need to replace the links throughout the body of the content. This means we need two functions in our helper file. We will need a leave site function, and we will need a replace links function. Let's begin by replacing the links. So let's create a public function replace links. We're going to be passing it matches. The reason why we're passing it matches is because if again we look back at our original main file, we're calling replace links from a preg replace callback. By default, preg replace callback will send to this function matches that result from this pattern search on this article text. So first we need to do is we need to determine where in the matches our link actually exists. And if you're familiar with the matches and preg replacing, matches 2 will contain the exact match and just the text from the match. In this situation, matches 2 will contain just the link within the href tag, which is the piece of information we're searching for 
through the content. Next what we need to do is check to make sure this is actually an external link. So we're going to run a quick check against the link and compare it to JURI root. JURI root is a Joomla function which will return the root URL for a Joomla website. If the string position link and JUI root equals true, meaning that the root URL for my Joomla website is located within the link text, this means I'm on an internal link. In that case, we do not want to try to replace the link. We simply want to return it as it is. Now we'll add an else statement. First, what we'll need to do is we're going to need to retrieve some of the params from the plugin which were entered in the admin panel by the user or set by default. The first of these is the warning page. Our warning page is this params get warning page. To refresh your memory, if we look at the link protect XML, we see that we have a field warning page. This is a modal article type which means that in the admin panel we're selecting a Joomla content article which is the warning page. So now in my else statement I'm going to retrieve that warning page. I'm also going to retrieve the external link. So now what I'm doing is I'm setting the external variable equal to the base64 encoded value of the link. Remember that the link is the match that was returned from our search through the content. So now we have set two variables so far, the warning page and the external link URL, and it's base64 encoded. This way we can pass it easily through the URL. Lastly, we're going to need to define the new link. The new link is going to be equal to href and then a jroute. Now because we're within the content we can actually take advantage of a content helper route. This helper file is located within com underscore content in the components directory of your Joomla website and what it will allow us to do is to get the article route based on an ID. Now we have the ID in warning page because when we use the modal article type in our params here, it will return the ID of the content item we select. The user will be clicking on a content item, but the field will technically be saving the ID. So warning page will contain the ID of the page we want to retrieve. So we can use the content helper route, get article route, pass in the warning page, and then we're going to tack on the external URL. Once we've done that, we'll need to close our href tag. Now we simply return the new link. So now that we've defined this, what we need to do is actually write our doc block because it is important to always have a doc block stating what you are doing. This function is used to replace all the matched links. We're passing in an array of matches. This is an array of matched link items we are going to return a string and the return string will be the replaced link string. Keeping in mind that if we're on an internal link we're actually returning simply the link that we found. So now we've done the piece of replacing all the links throughout our content. The next bit that we're going to need to do is handling when we're on the warning page and we're about to exit the site. If we look back at our link protect page, we'll see that we called this function leave site. So in our helper, we're going to need to create another function 
called leave site. We're passing in two values, the article as well as the external link. One thing we'll need to also check when we're leaving the site is the second param that's been set by our XML file, whether or not to open the link in a new window. So we'll check target equal to this params get new window. And we'll just do a quick if statement here. So if that evaluates to a true, then target is equal to blank, else target is equal to nothing. Now what we also need to do is actually retrieve the link value from the external base64 encoded link that we've passed into this function. So we'll do a base64 decode of external. Now the last bit is going to be to search through the article text and do a find and replace of our keyword value which will be curly brace link protect URL curly brace with our new link URL which is going to be a href equals link and then we also need to go ahead and check to see if we're setting a target so we'll add our target value as well and then lastly we'll just add the link itself as the text for the link we're going to perform this replacement throughout the text so let's now document this function this is a function to replace all the external links on the exit page or warning page. We're passing in an object of an article which is the content item. We're also passing in a string which is the encoded external URL link and then we're returning a string and actually we won't be doing a direct return we're, because this is an instance of the article text we can simply remove the return value. So now what we have in review is a replace links function which is going to be run on all matching patterns that match the href pattern within the article text. We also have a second function called leave site. The leave site function is going to be run if we have an external hash or external URL value in the URL, meaning in essence that we are on the warning or exit page. So we'll make that save and let's go ahead and make sure that our original file is saved. And then what we can do is let's look at the code in entirety. So we'll want to navigate to the administration panel of our Joomla website and we'll go into the article manager where we can edit an article. Here what we need to do is create an, a couple of external links. So we'll select the text and we'll just link that text to an external URL. Okay. Let's also create an internal URL link by selecting a content item. Now we have an external and an internal link in this content item. But we haven't set the params in our plugin yet. So let's create a new content item. We'll call this our warning page. And here we need to remember to include our keyword link protect URL. Remember that the link protect URL will be replaced by our plugin with the exit link. So now we'll add a little notification. You are about to leave our site. If you would like to continue, please click the link below.
and we'll save that. Now, let's navigate to the Plugin Manager. We'll open up the Link Protect plugin. Let's enable the plugin and go into our basic options. We're going to want to select the warning page and let's leave it to open it in a new window. And our plugin has been saved successfully. Now we can see we have a green check and now let's navigate to the front part of our website. So by hovering over the link, I notice at the bottom left hand corner, it now shows me localhost link protect id equal 7 and external equal and I have a hash following that. This means that my plugin has worked successfully. I can now click on that and I am now presented at the warning page. You'll also notice it says you're about to leave our site. If you would like to continue, please click the link below. No longer does it show link protect URL, but rather it's been replaced with the actual external link. Clicking on that link also opens that tab in a new window. This was because when I looked at my plugin parameters, I set the second option, new tab, equal to yes. So now what I have is a warning page which automatically protects all external links. If I look back at the other URL, which is the internal link, you'll notice by looking at the bottom left, the URL has not been replaced, but instead clicking that continues on just as I would expect by taking me to the page directly. So, congratulations. You have successfully written your first plugin. We're going to look in the next lecture in regards to the language file, how to clean that up, and how to make sure that everything works the way we expect it to work the first time. There's also going to be a couple of implementation and integration techniques which we can review as well. But this concludes the lecture regarding the helper PHP and our plugin creation. I hope you've learned a lot and you found it easy to follow.